year five and six, welcome to week eight of science. To recap what we did in week six and week seven for science, we looked at the key question, are all offspring of living things identical? And we, we looked at that for humans and for animals. We've also briefly spoken about cells, chromosomes, DNA and genes and how this these characteristics can be passed down through inheritance. So let's see what we're doing today. So today we're going to move on to the LO to identify how animals and plants are adapted to suit their environment in different ways and that ad adaptation may lead to evolution. To be able to answer this LO we are also going to be planning an inquiry or an experiment that will answer the key question. And then next week you will be carrying out that experiment and then recording your results. So before you can plan an experiment, let's find out more content about this LA. So what's cool about being a bird of prey? Loads, that's what. Check this out. Their feet are perfectly designed for catching, holding, and carrying their prey. A bird of prey's beak is curved at the tip with razor sharp cutting edges so they can rip and tear apart their prey. Our eyes would be this big if we had the eyes of an owl. So let's have a quick look at two other examples of how birds have adapted. We have the penguin and the wading bird. So the penguins, they normally live in very cold conditions. So they have lots of extra fat or blubber under their skin to protect them and to keep them warm. They also have wings which are shaped like flippers, which help them to fly or a flying action underwater very very quickly. The wading bird has long legs so that it can walk through the waters in search for their food. That is how that animal has adapted. How is it that birds have the right features to help them survive where they live? We're going to watch a video on the next slide now and you'll find out a bit more about one of the theories. Charles Darwin was born in England in 1809. He was a keen naturalist and geologist who made detailed observations about the natural world. Darwin first became interested in nature while studying theology at Cambridge, where he developed a passion for beetle collecting, which was encouraged by his cousin, William Fox. During this time, Darwin learned many important scientific skills, including species identification, how to catalogue specimens and fieldwork. At the age of 22, Darwin joined a five-year voyage on the Navy survey ship, the HMS Beagle, in order to serve as a naturalist and companion to Captain Robert Fitzroy. Although a junior naturalist, Darwin was already skilled in both biology and geology, and he was expected to closely observe both plants and animals as well as rock formations. Whilst on board the Beagle, Fitzroy presented Darwin with an important book called Principles of Geology. This helped him to understand how landscapes changed as a result of geological processes and led to Darwin suggesting that coral reefs in the Pacific Ocean developed as a result of tectonic plate movement. The most famous destination during the voyage of the Beagle was the Galapagos Islands off the coast of South America, where Darwin spent five weeks studying a variety of animal and plant life, including finches, tortoises and mockingbirds in particular. During the five-year voyage of the HMS Beagle, Darwin collected thousands of natural specimens of birds, plants, and fossils from across the globe, including 13 species of finch taken from some of the Galapagos Islands. Darwin kept detailed notes of all that he saw during his long voyage, and these, together with his diaries, formed the basis of his book, Journal of Researches, which was later to become famously known as the Voyage of the Beagle. Darwin called his trip on the HMS Beagle by far the most important voyage of my life. Upon his return to the UK, Darwin became puzzled by the geographic distribution of wildlife and fossils he had collected on the voyage. 
He noticed that whilst there were species of animal that existed unchanged across the globe, some other species showed physical differences based on the ecological habitat from which they came. This was particularly apparent in his observations of the Galapagos finches, which showed variations in their beaks and claws depending on the type of food that was available to them. After extensive investigation and discussion with other scientists, Darwin developed the idea that all species evolve through a process of natural selection, where certain members successfully adapt to cope with changes in their habitat, and others that fail to adapt eventually die out. This theory was later published in his book, on the origin of species. In this video, you have learned the importance of observation in the development of one of the most famous biological theories of all time. So for today's task, we are going to be designing an experiment similar to what Darwin did with the finches. So we are going to see how birds have adapted their beak, how be beaks have been adapted on birds for different foods. So we're going to give you lots of different birds and then some of the foods that they might eat and we're going to design an experiment to test which one it is. So on the screen you can see the five birds that we've chosen for this experiment. We've got a robin, an owl, a butcher bird, a duck and a blackbird. What you need to do, and if you look closer you can see that they've all got different shapes, beaks, different lengths, different some of them a bit more clawed what we'd like you to do is find some equipment that you might have at home which would symbolize those beaks so try to look at the shape of the beak and how long it is so for example your robin beak will need to be shorter than the duck so there's a, some ideas that we came up with of things that you might have at home that you could use. You could use two spoons and stick them together with some sellotape. Please ask your parents first. You could use some tweezers, scissors maybe, chopsticks, clothes pegs. Anything that will make the beak shape. It doesn't really matter what you use. It just needs, they just need to, you just need to have different equipment for each bird. It will make more sense in a second when we go through the task. So for the birds that we have chosen, we have found the foods that they prefer to eat. And on the screen, you can see that there are pictures identifying that, that food. But there's also, there is alternative, the equipment that we will be using to represent that food. So for the insects, you could use raisins or you could use sultanas, you could use dates, something that is quite small and round. Um, for the seeds or the um, yeah the small seeds you could use rice or if you have any bird seeds or small hamster food that might work as well for meat you could use play-doh or other larger round objects for worms you could use a pipe cleaner if you have that or spaghetti but with the spaghetti, make sure you ask an adult to help you cook it first, so they're a bit more slimy. And then for in for the leaves, you could either use a leaf or you could use grass, which would also work. So think carefully about what you have access to, and then you need to get that ready and prepared for next lesson. Now it comes to planning the inquiry. So how you set this out is up to you. But remember, when we are planning an inquiry or an investigation, we need to have certain parts filled in before you can do the investigation to make sure that it's successful. So you need to have an aim. So what is it that you're trying to find out? Prediction. What do you predict is going to happen? Can you give a reason for that? Equipment. What equipment will you use? That need, you need to be really, really clear on that because you're going to have to get that ready before you do the experiment. Fair test. What is the method you're going to use? How will you ensure that this fair test that it is a fair test? So, will you give, will you do each bird for a minute or for thirty seconds? Will you? How, what will you measure? Will you measure how many how many pieces of food they can they can collect? 
you need to think quite carefully about that. Results. Will you record it in a table? And will you do that for each bird, with each seed, with each food, sorry? Conclusion. So you can't do that yet, but you need to think about, have space for you to write your conclusion. Once you've planned your, once you've planned your inquiry, you need to make sure that you have the equipment you need ready for, the, for when you complete the science experiment for week nine. Just to remind you, there is no set day or time when you have to do that. You could do it the next day if that's what you choose to do. For the week nine task, you need to look back at the plans that you made last week and make sure that you completely understand what you are wanting to achieve. And today you're going to be completing the experiment. So you need to make sure you follow them step by step so that your method is consistent and it makes it a fair test. And then you can record your results and you write your conclusions. Hope you have fun. Send your completed work to Miss Reese or Mrs Mullis over Purple Mash so we can see what you've been up to. We really love receiving your emails.